Hey guys, Aaron here. Today I'm going to be making a video showing you guys how to replace a turbocharger on an F-150 equipped with a 2.7 liter EcoBoost engine. Now this particular truck is a 2015 with about 170,000 miles and what we're experiencing is a low power condition upon heavy throttle or even light throttle and we do have a check engine light that has illuminated. We are getting a code P0299 which indicates a low boost condition. Now besides P0299 and low power, we're not really experiencing any other symptoms. I have seen where these turbochargers fail and they'll cause a great amount of smoke to come out of the tailpipe. That just isn't our case in this instance. So after a little bit of testing, I actually found that the wastegate actuator on the left hand side of the motor was bad. The wastegate is a part of the turbocharger itself. And according to Ford, it's not serviceable. You have to buy the entire turbocharger to get the wastegate. I know you can go ahead and get aftermarket, aftermarket wastegates for these motors uh, but since this is a fleet vehicle we're going to go ahead and stick with the OEM part. So before we get into how to replace the turbocharger itself let me go ahead and show you guys how I test the wastegates or the wastegate actuators on these motors. All right, so here we have a brand new turbocharger from Ford. This is the left-hand side turbocharger. And you can see the uh, wastegate actuator here. You'll see a little port that a vacuum line goes to. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a vacuum pump, a little handheld vacuum pump, and we are going to uh, connect our hose and we're just gonna apply a little bit of vacuum to this rod. And we're gonna see when this rod starts to go into the, uh, the wastegate here. We should get movement at, on this rod at eight uh, inches of vacuum, and then full travel of the rod will occur around 18 inches of vacuum. And with a bad turbocharger that's on the truck, we're getting absolutely no movement whatsoever, which indicates a broken diaphragm inside the wastegate actuator. So let's go ahead and run this test. And there's eight PSI, the rod's starting to move. There is 18 PSI and we have no more travel. So that's what you should be seeing when testing the wastegate actuators on your truck. Now, when we're replacing the turbocharger, there's a whole bunch of gaskets, O-rings, nuts, and studs that we're gonna have to replace with it. I'll go ahead and throw a link in the description for the parts and the tools that I used during this video. Uh, we're also gonna have to replace the oil feed line that goes to the turbocharger. There's a non-serviceable uh, filter at the end of this line uh, that just filters out any debris going to the turbo. You can't buy just the filter, you have to buy the whole entire line. So I'll go ahead and make sure to include this in the link in the description. It's a pretty important in, uh, part as well. As far as tools go, we're gonna need a couple of extensions for our sockets. We're gonna need a pick to remove some O-rings. We'll need a 15 millimeter socket and a 16 millimeter socket. I got a nice little swivel socket here for the exhaust studs. This is pretty handy. We're gonna need a 10 millimeter socket, a T45 Torx bit, an eight millimeter socket, a seven millimeter socket, and a E8 external Torx socket. We'll also need a 5.5 millimeter socket a 10 millimeter wrench, a 15 millimeter wrench, an inch pound wrench, a uh, foot pound wrench, and a pry bar as well. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is just remove the negative battery cable using a 10 millimeter socket. All right, next thing we need to do uh, is remove the upper intake. We're gonna be using a seven millimeter socket to do it. And then we need to remove the intake air temperature sensor at the back uh, of the intake right here. After that's removed, let's go ahead and remove the engine cover. All right, after that, there are four hoses that we need to remove that go to the intake for the driver's side turbocharger. These don't need to be removed uh, completely from the vehicle. They just need to be out of the way so we can get this moved a couple inches. All right, once we have all these lines loose, let's go ahead and jack up the vehicle. We're gonna be removing the tire and the inner fender well on the driver's side. All 
All right, so we got the wheel off and we're ready to move the inner fender. First thing we need to do though, is we need to remove the wiring uh, right here that is attached to the inner fender. Simply pull up, you can see the plastic grommet right there. There's three or four different areas where we're gonna have to do that. All right, once we got all of our wiring out of the way, there are a couple 5.5 millimeter bolts and a couple little plastic rivets that we'll need to remove to get this thing out. So as you can see with our inner fender here removed, uh, we have a lot better access to the turbocharger itself. Before we start removing anything, I like just to wash everything down with a little bit of penetrating oil or WD-40, any, any exposed bolts that you see up on the cylinder head or the exhaust, go ahead and rinse them down, especially if you have some rust, it's gonna make the job a lot easier. All right, now that we've done that, let's go ahead and remove the uh, two intake pipes that come from the turbocharger. One, the lower one that goes to our air filter and the charge pipe up here. I'm gonna be using a seven millimeter um, socket to go ahead and do that. All right, now that we got both intakes off, let's go ahead and remove the vacuum line for our wastegate actuator. Again, this is the line that you wanna test um, to see if your wastegate actuator is working, this nipple right here. Um, that's the same nipple that we used for our vacuum pump. All right, after that's complete, let's go ahead and remove the down pipe from the turbocharger. And to do that, we're gonna be using our 15 millimeter swivel head socket. We're gonna be using a couple extensions and I'm actually gonna go underneath the vehicle with an impact to remove the two nuts off of the studs. Once we do that, we can take a pry bar and we'll be able to separate the downpipe from the turbo. If you don't have a pry bar, you can go ahead and loosen the passenger side and the whole downpipe assembly should fall off, giving you a little more room. Before we can remove any of the coolant or oil lines on the turbocharger, we have to drain the coolant on the motor. And to do that, we're gonna go ahead and go over to the driver's side here, and we're gonna loosen up this red petcock on the bottom of the radiator. I'm gonna try to catch everything I can, but it is kind of a mess. You're gonna need a flathead screwdriver to do that. All right, so now that we've got the coolant drained out, we need to go ahead and remove all of the coolant and oil lines on the turbocharger itself. First thing we need to do though is remove this upper line and unfortunately we have an exhaust stud in the way. What we're gonna do is take a 16 millimeter socket, remove this exhaust nut. We're gonna take an E8 external Torx bit um, socket. We'll remove the stud and then we can get our T45 to loosen up this top line right here. Look at that, looks like I got lucky. The stud actually came out um, with the nut, so we're not gonna have to worry about using the E8. But if you're not that lucky like I am, you can go ahead and use that E8. Um, norm normally they fit on a quarter inch ratchet, and then you could just take it on the back of the stud and remove it. All right, now we got access to the bolt on the top line of the turbocharger. Let's go ahead and take our T45 and remove that bolt. All right, now we're gonna follow that line to the motor and we're gonna go ahead and take our eight millimeter socket and remove the bolt that holds the line on at the motor. Now let's go ahead and gently remove the uh, oil line from the turbocharger. Next, so let's go ahead and remove this pipe right here. It's a coolant pipe. We're gonna be using our T45. And while this is draining, let's go ahead and disconnect the pipe at the motor for the other side. 
um, coolant connection. And as you can see, there's one 10, mil 10 millimeter uh, bolt that we need to remove, and then we could just kind of wiggle this and loosen it a bit. All right, here we are underneath the vehicle. Last line that needs to come off is the oil return. We're gonna be using our T45 uh, single bolt up here. Then we're gonna be using an eight millimeter for the two bolts down at the motor. All right, so we've got the oil drain pipe removed. There's one bolt underneath the turbocharger. It is right here. It's 15 millimeter. We're gonna go ahead and remove that. Then we're gonna go top side and remove the last nut and stud, and then that finally remove this turbocharger. All right, so there we have the turbocharger. Let's go ahead and take this off to the bench, and then we're gonna prep our new uh, turbocharger for install. All right, so here we are on the workbench, our old turbocharger next to our new one. There's a couple things that we need to do before we can go ahead and install this, one of which is install our new um, exhaust studs for our downpipe. We need to take off our old coolant hose, reseal it, and install it on our new turbocharger. Then we need to install new studs into our cylinder head. Um, according to the Ford manual, we can't reuse these, so we're going to go ahead and put those on. All right, so before we throw the turbocharger on, we need to remove the last stud, and then we need to install our two new studs and torque them down properly. So I'm gonna take my E8 Torx bit, just remove this one. Go ahead and throw our new ones in. All right, I got my inch pound wrench all set up. Let's go ahead and torque these bad boys on. All right, so now we're completely ready to throw our turbocharger on. There's one thing I'd like to discuss, and that's the torque specs of these studs and bolts. Um, Ford has kind of a weird thing with these bolts. We're gonna be torquing this nut that's gonna be going on this stud, and this bottom bolt down to 44 foot-pounds. We're gonna torque this top nut on this stud down to 27 foot-pounds. I don't know why they're not all the same, but for some reason, this stud gets 27, and these two, this bolt and this nut, is gonna get 44. All right, now it's time to go ahead and throw the downpipe gasket in. Uh, the issue that we have is that the downpipe is really close to the turbocharger and there's just no room. So what I did is I ratchet strapped 
the Y pipe to the transmission cross member and it went ahead and gave me enough room to, to get some clearance to get this thing in here. Um, and that's only if you don't disconnect the other side, side uh, the passenger side exhaust from the turbo. I don't like doing that because it takes more time. This is a little bit quicker. And all you have to do is you take just a little pry bar, pry down the down pipe, and it'll fit in just like that. All right, so now our down pipe is ready to be torqued on. But before I do that, I'm going to go down below, replace the seal in the block for the oil drain tube, and then we're going to mount the oil drain tube to the turbocharger. All right, now that we got everything bolted on correctly, let's go ahead and throw our wastegate reference line back on. And now we can begin to go ahead and throw our intake charge pipe back on. All right, so the next step here is to go ahead and throw our intake back on, fill it full of coolant. I'm gonna go ahead and leave the wheel well off. That way we can monitor the turbo for any leaks and we have really good visibility of all of the O-rings that we've touched. Once we verify that all the O-rings are not leaking and they're sealed, we can go ahead and throw our wheel well back on. We're just about ready to fire up the truck. Last thing to do is to add coolant. It's gonna take anywhere between two to three gallons. All right, so everything's put back correctly. It's time to go ahead and fire this thing up. I'm gonna monitor the turbocharger for any coolant and exhaust leaks. Um, I'm gonna let it idle for about five minutes and then take it on a test drive. Alright guys, just got done with the test drive and the truck definitely has a lot more power. Boost is back where it should be, around 18 and 19 PSI. So that pretty much concludes it for this video. Thanks for watching as always and make sure to check the link in the description for the parts and tools I use during this video. Thanks again guys, see you next time.